How has being a power athlete helped my Navy career? By making me stay in shape as a Navy officer. This is Jim Reinhardt, and this is my Navy Sea story. My dad served 21 years in the Navy. He joined right after um, high school, and I've just been uh, submerged into the Navy life ever since I was born. Um, I was born while he was stationed at NAS Lemoore uh, in Fresno. He was an AO, retired as a first class. I don't know, just seeing him in uniform and, and all the other kids in school when he would pick me up from school, he always was seen as like the cool like hero, like G.I. Joe type. And I was like, wow, that's so cool, I the coolest dad ever. So I was like, I wanna wear that uniform too because I wanna be cool just like him. <laughs> I had my son when I was uh, active duty in the Navy. Uh, it was my last year of active military service. Um, and it wasn't too difficult at that time balancing because you know, I, I had my child uh, in daycare through the CDC. And you know, in the mornings, you know, I just have to wake up. I wake up like five in the morning. You know, I would pump before, take my son to the daycare and then off to work. And then from work, then I go pick up from daycare and go home and enjoy my time with them after work. Um, I knew about rugby in high school because I would see people in the community like play in the park, you know, like they pick up rugby games. And I didn't know like where I should look or anything until my senior year of college, um, they started up a, a rugby team called the Sea Hags. So I was like, I don't really have much, it's my last semester and I'm already, I already front loaded all my classes. So like my last year, I was just basically just, you know, coasting through. I was like, oh, I got a lot of free time. I should pick up rugby. It looks like fun. And I would like to take out some aggression, you know, and just be able to tackle people. That'd be awesome. It wasn't until like a year and a half after I joined the Navy um, that I was like, hmm, let me see if I can find, when I got stationed in Augusta, Georgia, I was like, hmm, let me see uh, if they have a, a women's rugby team. Because that'll be fun to you know, get back into, just for, you know, just for fitness, for fun, and the camaraderie of being a part of a rugby team. I was like, oh, I found, I was Googling, I was like, oh, I found it. Uh, the Augusta Furies, that's, that's so cool. We made it to the top three on the Eastern Conference Championships. One of the USA rugby coaches was there, one of the assistant coaches, uh, Martha Baines. Uh, she was there, and she was only there to, to scout the other team members that we were playing against. But she was so blown away between myself and my other teammates. A week later, she's like, we're having a camp in Virginia and we want you to be there. You know, we weren't expecting to see such great performance out of you all, out of, both, out of all of you. And we would like to see how you can perform at the uh, elite level. So um, since starting and getting onto the, the Eagles uh, radar, so between camps, mini camps that we had there and the full-time training there, you know, the, the pool kept just getting smaller and smaller until the final, I guess, two months, three months prior is when, you know, I sat down with Pete Steinberg, gave me feedback on my, you know, my progress. He says I, I grew in a lot and he would love to see me um, on the pitch at the World Cup. What it felt like to me being in Ireland and like, like the biggest moment, like, that I felt, I would say as soon as we touched down in Ireland and when we got off the plane, we were walking through, you know, um, the airport and seeing the, I guess, the, the monumental display of Women's, World, uh, Women's Rugby World Cup 2017. And I was like, really, I'm here? <laughs> this is it, I'm in Ireland? This is so crazy. And then like being selected and or being rostered to play against Spain and then lining up and uh, singing the national anthem with my teammates. It was just a surreal moment, I couldn't believe it.
I started playing rugby for fun and just an outlet for me. But now, like, this is serious. Now the Americans arrived in Dublin wanting to make rugby 15. And Maria Casado on his 23 for Spain. Big shove comes in from the Americans. And the front rows go up. And America walk over the top. Gray gets taken the midfield from Corson. And now America play on. You don't stop and watch. You better carry on to the referee blood of Gustavus. Gets it out. Here come America. And just being there and being able to switch out. Like, I just feel like, you know, I'm just changing uniforms, you know. Put my Navy uniform down, let me put my rugby uniform, you know, back on. So I, I just feel like it's just like, you know, just a dual-headed type of have a role for me, being a Navy officer, being a um, an eagle. I guess the the one thing that, or I have a few things that stand out to me is in my military service. But the one thing that really sticks out to me is meeting, um, you know, a lot of great people in my life, and a lot of it was because of the military. And there are people that I would trust with my my own life, my own my own son's life. Um, cause there's just how, uh, just how close we became. Just meeting them, whether it's on like deployment, or even people who I was stationed with. It's just that camaraderie, and just I don't know. That's just a, uh, it's, it's very personal to me. Cause I never felt like that. With anything else in my life, as far as like, you know, going to school or community activities. I feel like the Navy has brought in my family. We may not be related though, but we're, we're pretty close, like like we are. And I will say, you know, my experiences like deploying and meeting all those people, people I worked with, people who worked for me, it's just, uh, I will not trade that experience for the world because I met some pretty great people.